Hi friends, I'm Flutter. I want to talk to you about an interaction that I've been working on and how it started one way and ended up being really different at the end. It's a really good example about problem solving when you're developing for your game and how to make good design decisions. And when you make decisions on your interactions and the different mechanics for your game to make those decisions based on the purpose and the design and what you're going for in your application. I'm making a narrative based game. And in this scene, I'm asking the player to put wood over here on the campfire. Then after they put the wood on the campfire, I'm asking them to choose one of these three objects to then place on the campfire. And what happens is when they place one of those three objects, it changes the scene. So the problem I was having was I have this campfire and it's got a lot of things happening in this script called wood ignite. So when I place the wood on to the campfire, there are particles that get activated and then the grab interactables of those three objects get turned on. I have them off because I don't want the player to immediately go to those grab interactables, and then throw one on the campfire. I'm guiding them with a fairy guide character, telling them, you know, what to do, the directions, but also guiding them through the story and asking questions and just adding to the ambiance of everything. So what was happening is this box collider was in the way between the campfire doing these interactions and working with these objects. So I really needed these three scene changer objects to hit this in order for it to change, but this box collider was in the way. Okay, so how was I gonna solve this? Well, I could just have this wood piece go poof and not exist anymore, but I thought that that would look unrealistic and wouldn't look good. And you can't turn off the box collider from the wood because then once you place it, it'll go right through the campfire. If I have gravity on here, then I don't have a box collider, it's gonna go through. So this helps it detect the campfire and then just sit on there. And I really wanted the wood to sit on the campfire. I didn't want it to go away because it's a ritual that the player is participating in. And then they add one of these objects on top of that. But it also kind of looked weird. Like now we've got these three objects stacking and kind of wasn't sure about that. So what were some ways that I could solve this problem? And there were a lot of other things that I took into consideration. You have to look at the logic of your particular game. So I have not walked you through what everything is doing here and all the different logic I have. I mean, I also have a timeline that's part of this. So there's a lot of different things going on. So I'm just going to talk about this, the collisions between these different objects and how I really solved that issue in this interaction. All right, so some strategies that I considered, I have some notes here and why they didn't work. I'll go through them quickly. First, I thought, well, I could adjust the timing and the sequence of these events, you know, and not have all of these three objects colliding simultaneously. See, the thing is, is that you've got the campfire box collider colliding with the wood collider, and then you add this third collider, and Unity's physics engine just can't really decipher which collider it should be paying attention to. And then com conflicts start happening. And there's just some confusion there. I believe you can use multiple colliders, but you'd have to use probably a layer-based collision detection, which I didn't use because I tried using a layers approach before on another interaction and I had trouble just getting those settings to work and I didn't want to go down that road. So that could be something that you could try here. What I did try, I was thinking I could do this easier. I thought, okay, well maybe I could parent the wood object once it hits the campfire and then it would inherit the campfire's functionality. Well, that didn't work. And then I thought, well, maybe I could use on collision stay if three objects need to remain over a period of time in contact with each other then maybe I could use that because that method is called once per frame for every collider that's touching the rigid body but that didn't work either so after going through 
a lot of different code changes in turning things off and on and seeing what would work. This is what I landed on. I landed on fading the wood. So on the grab interactable wood that I'm using in this, I have wood fuel as a script. And we're going to take a look at that. And the fade duration is 10. So let's just look at what I'm talking about here. I have an enumerator fade out routine. And so what I have happening is that that material, uh, on the, it's just like starting, the alpha is starting to fade. So I do reference the mesh renderer of that object. And then, yes, it fades that material. One thing I had to do is there's a transform position here towards the end of the script. I had to move the wood out of the way because even though it faded, it was still in the way of that collision with the scene changer object. And that's because I couldn't actually destroy the object. So I moved it out of the way. And I also have scene changer, wood burned is true. So I made a scene changer script to put on those three objects that get thrown on the campfire to change the scene. And they compare the tag to the campfire tag. So there is a tag on that. And then it knows, okay, once I do want this to go in order, I have the fairy telling the player this, and I do want the player to put the wood on first and then the object. It's part of the meditative ritual that's a part of this game. I could have not included that and just had the player take the scene changer and put it right onto the campfire and then change the scene. But that's not good storytelling. That's just, okay, this functionality works, uh, and let's just push them to the next scene and keep them going. My game is contemplative, and you want to give the player space because you're asking them questions to, for them to reflect on. And if I'm just running them through, I'm not really providing the correct experience for the purpose of my app. So you really need to think of your game logic, and then you need to think of the purpose of your app and create accordingly. Okay, so let's go back in here. Let's look at these materials. I got this campfire and wood assets from the Unity Asset Store, and it came with this material and it's using this shader. Now I'm using the universal render pipeline and in order for the fade to work with the script that I created, I needed the material to be transparent. So I used the same image file, which is a PNG that was provided from the creator of those assets. Then I just made a new material and made sure that it was transparent and had alpha and then just dragged that gradient right to the base map. Now I'm using unlit here because these are main elements for the interaction in this scene, but it might not be realistic. Maybe something more like lit is realistic because you can see it matches the lighting of the trees here. So this is a decision I'm not gonna make right now, but I need to think about that. The ma main thing that I needed to get done was to just have the functionality work. So my first goal is to have a complete walkthrough of this story done. And then I'm gonna go in and tweak all these materials, the objects, and make sure the sound and everything is perfect for the environment and is enhancing the story and going with the story and tells it the best. So those are the decisions I'm gonna make on the next round. I have all those things in mind as I'm working, but the main thing is just to get this to function <laughs> in my headset and so I can test it and then go from there. But these are things to think about. Now, the other thing that I do like, I like that this is fading because it also points back to time and elongating time, elongating the experience, take a breath, look at your surroundings, it's furthering that concept. And so if I were to have it just snap off, it wouldn't for that concept. So this ended up being a better interaction and a better decision, even though I was having all this trouble and I really wanted that wood to just stay there and then just keep stacking. But ultimately that didn't work out and it, this looked better. So that is all I wanted to discuss today. I hope this was helpful. Please let me know in the comments what kind of videos that you'd like for me to create 
Do you like step to by step tutorials? Is this interesting for you because you're hearing about my process and then how I'm troubleshooting? I like to really share the discoveries that I'm making because I mean, I could do a step-by-step -step tutorial, but I think it's important when I can tell you my process and those discoveries, just things that come up that get lost otherwise. So yeah, I'm just highlighting those things. Let me know though, you might not like that. So <laughs> let me know what you're looking for. I'm really appreciative that you follow my channel if you're subscribed. So subscribe if you haven't. Um, and I'm really happy that you've watched this video to the end. And thank you so much for watching, friends. Until next time, keep going with your game.